remember loading up my mother's station wagon with paintings, and the paintings bounced against each other on the way to the show. So the paint just kind of smeared and smudged and stuff going, and I unloaded, and I didn't know if they were better or worse. I felt very insecure about what the rules and regulations were, you know, what's the grounding of this, where with furniture, at least you have, you know, you have wide open creative options, but you still have the ergonomics and the issues of function to deal with. So there was kind of a grounding. And the other thing that interested me a lot was the concept of learning the media, how to work with the media. You know, that there were certain rules that the material itself has, uh, and that there's a tradition of technique that really is pretty important to get a handle on. Those parameters felt, made me feel much more comfortable continuing on. I just felt very insecure in the fine arts because I didn't know how to judge things. You know, it was so wide open. It was in a sense too wide open for me. I like that feeling of creativity but still a certain kind of grounding. Started out way back when, like high school time, in fine arts painting and sculpture, thinking I'd go that direction and then felt a little bit lost on how to judge quality and direction. You know, it seemed like everything was fair, fair game. And actually, the American Crafts Council Objects USA show came through. And this is the Philadelphia area, is where I grew up. And I went to the Objects USA show, and for the first time saw work by Wendell and Eshrick and, you know, the masters, the big names, and fell in love with it. And so started doing, you know, doing what I needed to do to learn woodworking and furniture back. This would have been 73, back in that period of time. And uh, did not go to art school offhand, but found a fifth generation German cabinet maker and did a two year apprenticeship and then went up to Boston University with Jerry Osgood for three and a half years and then taught for a while, then set up a studio, then got a Fulbright, went back to school for design in Italy for a year and then came back and moved to New York back in 91. You know, the city's very demanding and there's definitely times I felt like, a, well, not times, I think constantly I felt like a freak here, you know, because a woodworker in New York, I mean, it's, it's an oxymoron, you know, it, I mean, there's people doing it, but it's impractical. But it's not a bad fight, because I disagree in a sense with the city just going only big money. I think it's, I think it's hurt the city in many ways, you know, the, the high prices and just being, just caring about service industry and dot-com crap. I mean, please, how many apps do we need? Um, so it, it's an issue of balance. I think the city's a little out of balance right now. I like reality. With the arts, it, it, it's um, that world inside the frame. It's, the, in a sense, the artificial world. It's the world of the mind. It's, um, it's another space where furniture, you eat on it, you kick it, it it's damaged, it shares your life, you're interacting with it. It's not a pretentious, cultish, pretentious thing. It's just there with you. That's what I mean by reality. I like participating with physical, real objects that interact with real human beings. I think there are things that maybe have become in a sense easier, not so much because they're easy, but you get used to just doing them. And I'm, now I'm talking about technical issues, to building issues. But I, for me, that's somewhat boring, so I just keep looking for the next level. That's one reason why I talk about exploring new surfaces and new materials, because that'll throw challenge, technical challenges at me. Um, so I'm always trying to dig up some new challenge to put in a piece or work with or deal with to keep it interesting.